I'm recording to the cloud. This is John Wolpert, and we are on our fourth uh, baseline protocol technical steering committee meeting. This is the first one that we've done after a two week interval. Um, we'll probably go with two weeks um, by consensus, uh, unless there's dissent um, uh, going forward. Um, and then maybe in June, we'll cut to monthly. Um, so that's, that's the sort of the roadmap there. Um, hi, everybody. We got Jory. We got Eric Bravik uh, from uh, Core Convergence. We got Alia Kraft uh, from, also from Core Convergence. Nate McCurvey from Splunk. Stefan Schmidt from Unibright. We have Andrew Thurman from uh, Chainlink. Welcome, Andrew. I think this is your first time here. Kyle Thomas from Provide and Brian Chamberlain from Consensus. And if I missed you, um, it's okay. So uh, uh, hi, everybody. Hey, John. Hi. Hey, Kyle, great work. And there's Zach from, uh, from Aztec. So we're filling up here. If, um, yeah. yeah, it was good. Good to see you. Good to, uh, good to hear you. Um, so we're going to go through um, some, some real blocking and tackling this week. This is a big, a big week. I'm going to start uh, share my screen and I don't know if any, uh, any of you saw this week or the last week, there was a article that came out about um, baseline protocol. There's another big interview uh, happening uh, or that, that's getting, that's breaking today with uh, Richard Gendel Brown. He and I go head to head and I think we did pretty well on that. Um, he's, he's a fun guy to talk to. Um, and where, where the punchline was maybe we, uh, Maybe there are things where baseline and Corda, you know, baseline creates an opportunity for Corda and, and mainnet to have a peaceful and harmonious relationship. That would be nice. Um, so there's lots of, there's lots of activity. We're definitely uh, moving up the awareness front on the, on all, all uh, in all ways uh, out there in, in, in public, more and more companies calling more and more comp companies uh, wanting to join. And now some of those companies who are, you know, they're going to take some time because they have to get high level clearances, but that means that they're asking for high level clearances and that it, um, unto itself is something. Um, we have four agenda items, review of contributor maintainer guide and permissions regime, um, which I've been working really hard on uh, with a lot of different people individually, uh, Daniel Nortkin and others, uh, you know, as we promised we, that we would, we would have that done. And as of yesterday at noon, it was done. Um, and now we need to present it to you. And if, if there are no objections or cha major changes, I'm going to push to public today, um, right after the SSC meeting, probably. And Brian, I want to make sure that I uh, coordinate with you that we don't mess up any, uh, anything there. Uh, okay. One, one, uh, Jory, just as a placeholder, um, we can talk, take it offline, but um, I want to really need high, high priority is to talk to the Git book people as soon as possible because um, there's something wrong with, I think, the, their, their integration. Um, I think, and, and we need to know. Um, so if we can do that, that's a big, a big thing. Uh, review of new com communication channels um, so that we can, that Hudson Jamison, who will be joining at the bottom of the hour, he, he signaled he couldn't join before then, um, was very kind to set up for us. And uh, we have a review of work to date, progress towards near-term objectives that we want to talk about. And that we'll, we will continue that conversation on the SSC. Anybody that wants to join the SSC that isn't on the SSC this today, they might want to. Uh, we'll consider that. There's also an item, um, consider um, day change. Um, there was some thinking that maybe we use the TSC and the SSC as sort of lightweight bookends for um, what could pass as a lightweight sprint structure, either two week or monthly, um, where you know the TSC is sort of the review stuff um, ceremony and the SSC is the set the shiny objects um, ceremony. So 
do one on a Friday and one on a Monday or something like that. So that's a, that's something we should consider. And, um, and then the incentives and sponsorships I'd like to go through. Does anyone have, have any other uh, last minute um, agenda items? And time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've learned to, to do a nice long pause on any question on, on online meetings. Uh, okay, so with that, let's talk about the review of contributor maintainer guide and permissions regime. Um, Kyle, did you guys want to talk about the, you know the project that you know, the project you guys were doing? At, or Brian, did you have review that you wanted to talk about? Why don't you guys start thinking about that so that we make sure that we're reviewing the work today and like we can go into the repos. Um, because I think that's the, one of the big things is we want to get the, the TSC and the SSC meeting in particular down to a real um, kind of a regular format. Right? Um, and clearly we, you know, one of the things that should be in that format is re uh, work review. So, uh, you know, going forward, we can be kind of prepared for that. Teams can come on, we can invite people in. Okay. And you know, I don't know if Karthik has joined. I know that he had a conflict today. Um, so uh, if he joins, we can ask him that as well. So while we're going through these first two things, maybe you and uh, Kyle and Zach or Nate and, and Stefan, uh, you guys have all been doing real stuff. I'd, we'd, I think we'd love to hear about what's going on with the SAP Dynamics project. Okay. Sure. Right now, anything else? I'll ask again, any, any other additions or modifications to the agenda? All right, so be it. Um, let's go straight to maintainer guides <clears throat> and uh, what we came up with. So <clears throat> if we ratify this lightly, loose consensus, excuse me, not COVID, <clears throat> um, just old man coughing. Um, welcome, uh, so this will be a, a significant change to our docs. I think we have 30, I have 33 changes to the rights. Dory, one of the things that, that was a problem is that I couldn't just send this out to you guys without giving everybody permissions into Gitbook. And if, we, if I gave permissions to Gitbook, that means anybody could with impunity hit a merge and publish to without going through the maintainer review, which is kind of a good thing and a really bad thing. It's definitely a bad thing for me because I, you know, power corrupts and I can sit here and change docs all day long um, with no review. And, you know, that I don't want to get corrupted and, and, and become drunk with power and start you know, making changes to docs with impunity. So eventually yeah. it'd be good if we fix that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just um, actually typing out another email to get Gitbook support to, uh, again, I'll CC you on it and make sure. Right on. Talk to us. So, but there was just no other way, and, you know, because this isn't getting merged to a branch or anything um, on, 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 on GitHub, there's no way for anybody else to review what I've been writing. So this is the last time I want to play fast and loose with that. And Daniel Norkin did, did get in and was able to review. So, um, Welcome is still the same, more or less, but now we have an open source community thing where, you know, the same stuff working together. Um, but now we've added, you know, Slack, Discourse, and Telegram. Um, and that we, you know, you can sign up here um, and you've got Slack, Telegram, and Discord. I think I've got the Discord link right. And um, you can post to the community chat channel and hit all three of those. So I want everybody to be aware of that. And I'd like to open the conversation to comment on that. Um, there, the clear downside is if you're logged into all three of those things at the same time and you post to one of them, you're gonna get three pings on whatever devices are, are logged in. Uh, upside is you're really gonna get attention. <laughs> like you're gonna get my attention because when I've done it a couple of times, I'm like, whoa, you know, it's, you know, my, my phone blows up. Uh, so I really know that something's happened and I know where it's been posted. 
Uh, upside is, of course, you can, you, you, we, we now have, uh, Hudson made a, a very strong case that um, uh, the uh, Ethereum developer community is heavily on Discord and Telegram. Uh, downside of Telegram is it gets, um, you know, nuisance users a lot. Um, uh, less so with Slack. So it's, it, you know, he, this was a great but the but, you know, but we don't want to have all these different channels, but we wouldn't need to have to worry about that if we could have all those channels joined by a single channel. The, are there thoughts? Um, I'm a, I'm a big believer in this sort of structure. Um, you know, it, I, I would echo the same thing. Telegram and Discord both have their user groups and they're pretty strongly coupled there. Um, and so uh, this kind of structure is something you usually end up with uh, regardless of trying not to um, if you want to run you know, this sort of project. So I would vote, I would put in a plus one for kind of inclusion of those networks and this type of shared channel. That's just up to the users to manage the multiple pings and they're used to that anyway, right? So um, if we exclude Telegram and Discord, we're going to be excluding big, you know, big user groups. So understood. I like the current structure, so I like what's been done. I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> right on. So noted. Uh, anybody else? I don't, don't make me do that Ferris Bueller joke because it's getting old. Anyone, anyone, Bueller, Bueller. Man, comedy online sucks. You can't tell if you're, you can't read the room. You just, I'm just, I'm laughing behind the, the mic and the mute button. <laughs> we need, we need rim shots. Um, yeah. Uh, right, I'm checking chat here to make sure I like it. Good, okay, good. Um, all right, so we'll stick with this. Uh, I think the, the risk here is if we have, we have a very active Slack uh, community right now. I think we're, we're now going towards 400 on the Slack. We started like with 150 or so. We're now toward almost trending towards 400. I haven't checked today what it is, but it, it's you know, pretty lively. And we st we, it, it, the, uh, the numbers have not gone down. So, you know, dailies are right around, you know, some number of posts and some number of actives, you know, in the 150-ish range, I think, or maybe 115, 15 and 50 that rhymes. So, yeah, uh, something around there, pretty healthy. Um, uh, Telegram and Discard have not been publicized, have not been uh, promoted as a thing to be using, so they don't have anything on those channels yet. Um, the question is, do we, you know, do, do, you know, what do we, you know, I, does anybody have any thoughts about like, shall we put them out there? Um, is there, are there, maybe we can talk offline with some, some of the folks um, who want to do promotions. Um, the SSC uh, will have some people joining who are interested in comms and marketing. Um, Unibright has a, a, a terrific guy named Jack who it seems to be stepping up to ring lead a lot of those folks. So Stefan, you should uh, pass some sunshine his way. He's a good guy. Um, also, you know, the chain link thing was on that, on a call, um, on this same thing. So, you know, I, clearly, you know, Unibrain chain link uh, communities are very, very strong and really know what they're doing. So it's really good to have those guys, um, leading the charge. And they, they got on me the other day and they said, we need a team. We need to, you know, we need to get organized on this stuff. And they stepped up. So we had a meeting last week and they will proceed from there. I think we're going to make them kind of a subgroup of the SSC so that we don't add yet another committee and create more complexity. Um, any dis disagreement there? Makes perfect sense. All right. You're okay with Jack taking that effort on? Mm, totally so, yeah. I mean, he's, uh, he's, he's into it anyway uh, already for some weeks now. And so it's good to have it also like officially represented in say the SSC makes total sense. I like yeah. it. Um, we kind of read, read the riot act out or everybody on that call to say any, any contributions in this has to be in the interest of the community, all of the community. And, um, 
you know, that, that's the, the trick is um, balancing enlightened self-interest with, uh, well, enlightened self-interest. Um, <clears throat> so there's that. So the, that's the um, com communication channel thing. And then, um, yes, so Jory, this is, this is for you especially, but um, actually for everybody, uh, not the, so community leaders, open source community, contributors. So the way I di divided this up is uh, 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 Brian Chamberlain was, was good enough to, to compile a code of conduct, which you can see on the repo right now. Um, and I'm just linking to it here. Technical contributors, you know, it, and, you know it, all the basics and blocking and tackling, ECLA, ICLA, submitting a pull request. But basically that we have um, contributors are people that, you know, anybody can be a contributor. You don't need any special app access to get to the repo. You can get involved. You can submit pull requests. You do it here. Um, you can fork the repo um, and do pull requests and et cetera, et cetera. But then being a member, you can, you can ask to be a member by using this Slack channel. Oops, probably shouldn't have done that. Cancel. Um, so I set up a, ch a Slack channel uh, to post your GitHub ID name and company. I was, I looked all over the place for ways to do a sign up that were easy, cheap and or easy, free and, and reliable that we wouldn't get into trouble with. And I'm like, you know what, I'll just do a Slack channel. I don't need yet another tool, right? We've got plenty of tools at this point. Um, does that, yeah. So just wanted to get the sense from the community that we're doing the right thing there. You, uh, that we have a, a, a channel that you ask to become a member. So for example, Balaji uh, uh, Shetty Pachai uh, from India is really working hard on a couple of things. And uh, we wanted to be able to assign him to those things on, in issues. And, <clears throat> and he wanted to be able to post to a, a branch. So had to make him a member and then had to make him a core, you know, a, 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 you know, a member with right access. Um, as I was writing it, I'm like, you know, that's a lot, you know, that's a whole new level. That's a, you know, so now we've got contributors. I got to explain membership. I've got to explain, um, Jory, one of the interesting problems with or the interesting nits with the membership is that you're a member in the Ethereum Oasis org, which means that you're a member in everything. Even though I think we can put people into a team that would make them only have rights with the, with this repo or with the, with the baseline repos. Is that correct? Yeah, so membership to, it, you know, if you wanted to, because the in, initial problem that was, was posited is that we need to be able to assign people issues. Um, and so that base level of org membership is read and giving them read access to all the repositories in the Ethereum Oasis org is fine because read access is read access. It's, you know, there's, there's nothing that they can do. But and we the, flick them into a member's uh, team that gives them right access to the baseline pro, uh, repos. So from there, um, I think that the next level was contributor and in the structure, because so we have um, um, yeah, member, is, contributor, maintainer. And so you have to, somebody from the TSC has to then elevate that person, add that person to the contributor team so that they have right access. Yeah, so I willfully flipped this around. That's why I wanted to get with you beforehand, um, where contributors are basically what we call everybody. You can, anybody can contribute to the repo. If you're uh -huh. a member, you have access. And it means you know you, the, the the org under, you know can can spot you. We can assign you the things, but you can also assign others to items. And the suggestion was that we kind of limit that to a hundred members and see as we approach that number what we want to do from there before we go straight to um, or before we go to you know members being one level with read access and another level of membership for right access because that adds a whole step 
Yeah, it, it adds a step, but it's also a quasi important step because if that person is contributing on behalf of their employer, they must have their employer sign an ECLA. And so one of the things that we have to ensure before anybody um, you know, gets their first commit bit in is that they're signing the um, ICLA if they're contributing for themselves slash the ECLA if they're contributing on behalf of their employer. So that that's that's sort of the that's that's one of the reasons why the gate has there is there does have to be a gate unfortunately. Oh yes, there's a gate. The question is, do we want two gates or one? And that's the that's the question. We can take some of that offline, but I wanted to get the impressions from everybody on the on the call. Um, like I said, you know, the downside of having two gates. First of all, we're really hard to write. Second, it's a whole another page, right? Because it's like, here's what you get with being a member, and now here's how you become more than just a member. It was com it was confusing, and it, it's it, it in the writing of it, I was like, no, nah, this is rough. Um, so I, you know, I kind of sw uh, switched it around, and uh, again, I, you know, I wanted to get get with you, Jory, on on the change. Um, but uh, yeah, you have to submit the ECLA. So th what, what I think I'm proposing is that uh, we have the members, you know, as you become, you're either not a member or you are a member. And if you are a member, you have signed the ECLA and you have done everything you need to be able to write to, um, uh, to, po to push to any unprotected branch, to um, uh, be assigned and assigned issues and epics, et cetera, et cetera. That also means that the SSC would have effectively member we wouldn't have to have yet another permission level for the SFC because that's what they need. So easy for me to rewrite, but uh, you know that this is what this is an important thing for the TSC to consider. Uh, Brian, do you have thoughts? Uh, yeah, I guess you know. I think uh, I've kind of. I still need to settle on my thoughts, I guess. So I've got, I'm kind of conflicted at this point. I would do want to read through what you have again um, and just sit with it. Uh, I, I don't want to make it too complicated and there's certain limitations to the ways we can slice and dice access uh, for all the different systems that we have. Um, so that's about all I can say at this point. Is, um, all right, shall, we, more shall we move to... to what if we move to, um, I don't think there's anything requiring us <clears throat> to push this public today. Um, but we do want to get it up soon because you know, what I, we want to do is grow the membership and grow contribution levels. And to do that, people need, need the, the, you know, where the front door is and mm -hmm. how, to, how to get in and get doing stuff. So we, we definitely want to make that clear. And clarity is what I'm going for here, which is kind of what I mean. I, yeah. I would just quickly say I would keep it as simple as possible. That's yeah. what I would. I, that's what I would err on. As they say, simple as possible, but no simpler, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I wanted to air that out with everybody. Why don't we give it twenty four hours? Anybody with thoughts? And Jory, you and I can can go direct. Yeah. Uh, and bang it out. So, so that's one thing I want to do is if we have deviated from, or if there's a change from from what we were working on last week, we need to run that by the PGB too, and that we have a meeting with them today. So that shouldn't yep. be an obstacle. Yeah, and I know you've been busy with a lot of other things on this stuff. So um, um, yeah, uh, we can, we'll do that. So um, uh, so please, uh, I guess this is a PSA for anybody on the call. We don't want to take any more time on this issue, uh, but uh, please, um, supply us with your thoughts on the matter. You know, like, like a, you know, when you, if you have an oh, uh, uh, uh oh moment to say, you can't do that because this will happen. You know, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, member guidelines, code of conduct, how you get off or how you're removed beyond the general membership, et cetera. So here you become a maintainer. You know, so you've got basically member, contributor is anybody, maintainer or member is Anybody with write access, there is no read-only access in this proposal. You can easily change that. Um, uh, but but hopefully, if we do change it, we, we stick with what Hudson said and we keep it simple. 
um, technical steering committee, specification steering committee. Um, regarding that, so the maintainers, uh, Brian wrote a wonderful piece on how to be a maintainer, how, how they organize, how do you get involved. Um, there's a nice clean front door, you, um, how to become a maintainer, you're either invited by maintainers or you request one of the maintainers to become one. Um, I, I will add here the link to the list. Um, you're provisional for a while. You've got to show these things. You have to show that you're, you're, you've got this, these qualities, et cetera, et cetera. How, how, how to organize, how to stop being one. So we have all that. I'm really um, pleased to, to announce that we have that clear now. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna propose we're gonna add a new maintainer this week. So we have got another candidate. Right on. Um, it, uh, let's not lose that. Uh, in fact, I almost feel like we should pause here and, 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 and vet that. Do you wanna do that? Do the vetting of the candidate? Yeah, yeah. just so that we don't run out of time. I mean, that's a high, high, uh, high importance thing. Sure. Um, yeah, we've had a, a merge just recently uh, and from and some, several meetings with uh, someone from uh, EtherLime and uh, this guy, George uh, uh, es Espazov. I, I Lime Chain? I'm embarrassed. Yeah, uh, Lime Chain. Yes, sorry. Um, so apologies, I'm butchering his name, but I uh, wanted to propose him as a maintainer uh, as shown initiative. He's made some great contributions to the framework uh, and also the structure around how we do deployment of smart contracts and the management of that. And just been very proactive uh, scheduling meetings and getting us all um, on the same page with what the changes are for his work and where he sees things going. And so I've been impressed. I think it would be a good contribution or a good uh, adding him would be beneficial to the project. Is there any dissent? I just uh, last night merged in his pull request. Um, so if you want to look at his code, it's, it's in there. Um, Thank you, Eric. Uh, anybody else? Uh, you, could, you feel free to use uh, chat. I like to put those on the record, so I like to throw them in the chat. <laughs> it's easy I think to find. It's good to do that. All right, I think we're one away from a quorum there. Yeah, George is good. Kyle, good. All right, I think that's it. So I think we have a quorum on this. We have better than half of the people on this. So I think, unless I've misread my own rules, <laughs> or the rules I helped write, I think that's a uh, that's uh, a go. So let's, uh, Brian, you, you've got the ball to, to inform him and get him on board. All right. Sounds good. And you have, uh, you have, uh, the appropriate access level to get him in there, I think, right? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. That, uh, let it, sh sh let it be, let it be written, let it be done. Uh, so say we all or whatever, whatever, uh, important sounding words we use here. So, uh, um, moving on to technical steering committee, if, uh, if that out of the way. Are there any other um, uh, candidates for this week? I think Zach, uh, we 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 said you're you're all good, um, but I think uh, you need to go uh, uh, sync up with the maintainers, uh, Brian and stuff, before we get you on board. Yeah. So yeah, we need to do that. Um, I'll, I'll get on that. Thank you. I know you're busy, uh, but it's really good to have you on that team. Um, yeah, I'll do that. Right on. Um, okay, so moving on to TSC, uh, I just, I, you know, we have most of the TSC rules are in the guide, uh, uh, governance. So this is, you know, the, the sort of the shortest section that I wrote, probably make that bigger over time. Uh, last thing is the specification steering committee. Um, here, basically this is the, the, the idea is that, uh, anybody, I want to make it something very, very organic. So they would be a subcommittee of the TSC, but have co-equal responsibility. So it's not like so it's not like you're a second-class citizen on the SSC. Um, they have, you know, but but organizationally and governance-wise, 
you know, the PGB, then the TSC, and then the SSC. Um, but there's a very simple litmus test for whether you get on the SSC or not, and that is, are you stepping up to be an accountable person, not a responsible necessarily person, but an accountable person for a project? So, you know, we're going to start really using this um, heavily. Um, everybody seems to be, I've been, I've been doing some straw polls and people really like this uh, as a high, you know, way of bucketing up, you know, the agendas. I'd like to get to the point in the next two weeks where this is, where we can reliably say that this is an accurate representation of our priorities and our timelines or ish. Um, so that we can go to the community and say, look, you can work on whatever you want, but here are the shiny objects. I think that's basically our role, right? Is shiny object identifiers, right? Um, and so, you know, what are these shiny objects? Which ones are, do we think need to go before other things? A good example of that, and I was sketching that out this morning, you know, if you think about it, you know, there's, there's this idea of a gas tank uh, product that can't happen before a lot of other things happen. We've got this SAP dynamics thing happening. So what is sort of the, the ordering of things that need to happen in sequence to have a strong and healthy community that's contributing in the right way to the uh, main net and the ecosystem. Um, and so it's sort of a this before that kind of act, uh, activity we need to be able to be mindful of every, every time we meet. Uh, but the SSC, if you're not, you know, if, if you have, if your name is on one of these boxes, then you're on the SSC. And if your name isn't on one of those boxes, you're not. It's as simple as that. I, I like that because it's organic and it doesn't require some kind of a committee decision to put people on or off. Any thoughts? Um, I do have a quick question. Do you imagine that this is something that, um, you know, so as long as your name is on one of the boxes and you're actively kind of contributing to a project in the SSC, you're on it. But um, if you, uh, if your name isn't on one of the boxes, then you're not considered to be, you know what I mean? Like how, like how come and go is this committee based on an individual's like um, time and, um, you know, focus areas and that sort of thing or is it like because what I would what I wouldn't want to see is a case where somebody comes and um, contributes to a project for a while their names on one of the boxes and then they we, we don't have sort of a cleanup where they're still considered on in the SSC a year later even if they haven't say returned to the project yes uh, so uh, at the end of every SSC meeting the proposal is the format is, uh, you know, pruning, right? So we take a look at the, the list. If we've got some dead stuff there, we print it out. And in the pruning, if there are people that are on that and they're only on that and they've ghosted the project or whatever, and it's just kind of naturally dying, then uh, we, we can remove them from the SSC group. And what's nice, again, if, if member is right, and you need to be able to have right access. We did a lot of research on this because of the way Zen Hub works and other things. We, you, know, you need to be able to have right access to be able to effectively manage a project like this. Um, then uh, mm -hmm. you know, flipping them out of the SSC doesn't make, make them lose them any actual access rights on the, on the, if they're say doing work um, and uh, you know, in you know, practical work in, the, in other parts of the organization. So that, yeah, so you would just be removed from the SSC group team. Uh, if you were completely ghosting out and, or if you violated any code of conduct, then you're going to be removed from the membership altogether. Yeah. Okay, so that's, <clears throat> that's the proposal. Um, if anybody wants to read this through before we push it in in detailed way, uh, uh, it is kind of a problem because I, you know, we didn't write this in in .md. It's in GitHub or Gitbook, and the minute I hit merge, it's going to all go 
straight to the web. So, and we do have to fix them. Um, right? Okay. Any, any yeah, comments I'll, before we go? I'll, I'll, I'm going to take a look later today and I'll have some feedback. Thanks, Brian. Also, I like the blue diagram background. That's really nice. Yeah, that's my new, that's my new. It's, uh, it looks like, it looks like blueprints. It's really slick. I like that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I'm kind of jealous. I kind of want. <laughs> that's, uh, that was my, I, I'm sitting in front of a Surface Studio and it, I rub it with a diaper every day. It's my prized possessions. Um, 30 inches of writing board is fun. Um, so uh, review of work to date and progress. And so let's get into the fun stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, we talked about the comms channels, Hudson. We all are really grateful for the work you did on that. Seriously, I mean, that's that was Yeoman's work. Um, I think uh, you and Jory are going to want to sync up about how to make sure that uh, they, uh, that Oasis takes on the uh, responsibility for that stuff. But um, yeah, I'll talk to Jory today. Um, and um, yeah, thanks so far for your help, Jory. It's been excellent. Um, me and Jory had a jam session like a week or two ago where we just spent all day um, uh, asynchronously working on all the complications with it. <laughs> well, it seems to work. Um, the, the, the net of the input was we're going to try it for a while. It was a good idea to do it. Um, we need to now have the communications team make sure that those are all three vibrant communities, you know, Telegram, Discord, and, and also the discuss uh, thing was nice. So Yeah, um, that's not completely done yet. I need to switch that over to Oasis servers or other types of servers. Um, and luckily, it's not in a place where anyone's posted anything. So this was just a good way for me to practice setting it up at this point. Yep. I know you can do polls in there, which is nice. So that, you know, we can mm -hmm. do polls in. All right. So um, uh, review of work to date, progress towards yeah. near-term objectives. So I'll, I'll, I'll pull out my, uh, so we have this. And let's just bang through these, right? So we've got, you know, tools. Um, it'd be, you know, so baseline administrator. These haven't been uh, put onto the, on, so this is a good example of on the SSC, we'll go through and say, is this really a thing or not? What do we want to, you know, who wants to be accountable for that? Uh, but I can ask you, you here as well. I'm not going to take up time about it uh, on the call because we don't have that much time. Um, but, uh, you know, tools by, by the next meeting, I want to make sure that there's an accountable person on every single box. Okay. Um, so tools are one thing. Hosted baseline POC uh, and demos the Radish 34 uh, demo on Azure with uh, SAP and Dynamics. I put that one in here. Um, does anybody know if, we, if, we are, if we're doing that on any other Epic that, I, that we're missing? Uh, I, I would rather perhaps discuss if parts of it um, are also covered by the system of record integration tools and also in the long term um, abstraction and generalization of Radish 34 because the SAP baseline <coughs> dynamics example will uh, focus Radish as you already put it in the, in the title. Right. General integration APIs, Oracle services, Unibrand service and translators, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I was going to say I was going to say the same. So can can um, can uh, you guys be accountable to? Uh, one of the nice things is we you know, if there are epics underneath these items and and then down to into issues and tasks, um, you can have things rolling up to do two different things, right? So we can make, you know, it, it, but but whatever it is, let's get it under control and so that we can dashboard it. Yeah, sure. So uh, I think these are the, yeah, so the hosted baseline POC and then SOR. So it seems to me that the, the baseline POC demo of this SAP slash dynamics thing, which I think is really exciting. Do you guys feel like you can still pull that off by the end of April? Uh, it, it'll, be it'll be pretty close, yeah. Well, well, that's, that's, if, it's, if, it's, if it's not the end of April, it'll be early, early next month. Right now. Yep, exactly. So I think Does it's, it's want, also want a brief on that. Does anybody know not know what we're talking about on this? I don't. I don't have very many details in my mind about that. It sounds interesting, and um, we also have have a Splunk integration with the Radish thirty four demo. So if you and I was going to maybe demo that coming soon, maybe the next meeting. 
Um, but anyway, I could give you guys access to our GitHub repo to try it out if you want. It should help with deployment, development, all that stuff. So I'm adding a project here. With, with um, Radish. Yep. Uh, could you send, uh, or have you posted that, that integration? Or I'm just, uh, maybe I missed it. Um, no, we haven't yet. We, oh, okay. The only person I've really told about so far is John. <laughs> oh, okay. Nick, yeah, Nick can really you jump on? You, you, you're in the membership, right? So if you can jump on and uh, get some ethics into there, or, or at least something that we can track, or we okay. can, you know, um, I understand you've got your own repo on it, um, but it'd be great, you know, to to be able to keep that on the list. That's yeah. exciting. Is it, a pub is it a public fork I can take a look at, or is it private? It's not. It's not a public fork yet. Um, oh, okay. Uh, Jory, do you know if we've signed the EAC the, or the if ECLA? Signed ECLA. Yeah. And what was your company name again? I'll Splunk. look that up for you. Splunk. Splunk uh, I, I believe you have, um, but I'll confirm shortly. Okay. Thanks. Great. So for next time, let's. Uh, would love to get a re uh, a readout on that. Um, the community. Yeah, so. Um, and and uh, just for Nate, your your information, the um, it, it struck a bunch of us that uh, the the next bona fide that the community needs to see is a real integration of the current radish structure between two real systems of record mm -hmm. running on Azure, um, or or a cloud, but you know Azure is kind oh. of real close. Yeah, and I guess I also forgot to mention the folks over at Envision they've been playing with it too. They have access, and I think they're running in Azure. Right on. So uh, that's 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 what that is about, and the intention is to publishize that um, extensively when when it's done. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Are there any other uh, bright shiny objects uh, that that people want to bring up, Kyle? Uh, I do. Yeah. I guess I was wondering if you could direct your uh, view to the GitHub repo to look at the uh, insights. Just wanted to make sure everyone's aware of activity on the project itself. Um, go to the insights tab. Do, do you all, can you see that? I can't. Hold public? On. Yeah. Um, let me, uh, let me flip over. I don't know why I can't get out of here from there. Yeah, I'm definitely, definitely working on policing that, that signing object. Um, for sure. Hopefully, hopefully everyone considers it to be shiny. <laughs> Yeah, I'll do it this way. Ah, I'll just bring it up again. Insights? Yeah, is that is that tab available for everybody? Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is the um, this, the stats. Yeah, if you look through the, the merge pull request, just in terms of work done, um, yeah, the pulse tab at the top, I think, is, is pretty much a good uh, a good review. And this is just in the in the past uh, week, I think, is that's the default period. If, is there a way to center that on the? Uh, maybe it's my screen. Oh no, there it is. Okay. Make it bigger. Oh yeah. Um, so we've had some change updates. We've got a new deployment library for the smart contracts. This is the one that George put, uh, worked on over the last few weeks. Uh, that's in, and then. Uh, some new testing to improve stability and coverage of our contracts. Um, of course, we did the NFR spec change. Um, you know, and that kind of runs through some other updates for documentation and build file fixes and, and things like that. So this is a good overview. I don't know if um, you all frequently look at the insights, but just to get a sense of the activity level of the project, we've got really good Contributions coming in uh, every couple of days are fairly fairly large contributions coming in every couple of days, um, which is a good good cadence, I think. Yeah, it really is pretty nice. Um, are there uh, from Brian uh, and and uh, if, if Karthik is in there, um, Stefan, Kyle, you know, the guys who are really you know day to day right now on on. Uh, Taking a look at this stuff, what 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 do you think? What is your sense of what is important on the engineering side to get to next? 
what's what's what would you say your highest priority thing would be if you were you know in if, if there was such a thing as being in charge of an open source community yep perhaps so I think, if I, go ahead Stefan. Yeah, thanks. Um, I think, first of all, <clears throat> kudos to those who uh, decided to take the, the Radish case as a um, first example and demo use case, because it's, I think it's very feasible to uh, start all these, for example, integration matters that we are doing right now. So the only long-term uh, perspective that perhaps changed a little bit in, in my view is that it makes total sense to stick a little bit longer with the Radish example use case before generalizing um, stuff out of it into the protocol uh, layer. Um, that's why I also meant earlier when you showed the, uh, the different projects, John, that these of course have, have intersections and uh, currently I have, I have a very good feeling with the, for example, with the integration um, use case that we are showing that it's totally fine to, to work on, on Reddish level a little longer uh, to learn from it and also to um, extend that case from a very say easy or lim limited um, business objects to to those that uh, happen to be in the real world like uh, SAP um, request for proposal object is of course uh, consisting of like I don't know 1500 attributes and not three uh, so there's a lot of work to do uh, until we get our uh, heads totally around it how this works on reddish level and then to have the um, protocol extraction out of this perhaps a little later than planned but apart from that uh, i feel very comfortable with how it is set up um, right now and i think we're on a very good way i will say that um that the uh that uh, that, that was good good points uh, stefan i will say that i talked to karthik about this on the weekend extensively and he's quite excited about um radish uh about um um, a big improvement to a, 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 a well, let's call it a uh, generalized um, a generalized circuit. Yeah, there's been some progress. Yeah, so um, basically, the, the you know, so he's he's thinking that there's this sort of base level of circuitry right so there's the base um sort of everything is equal everything was done equivalently and then there's on top of that you layer um which would generate you know sort of a toolkit kind of a thing for for library generation and i thought that was exciting uh, brian i know you've been talking about that as well um yeah i think that's going to be a really a huge breakthrough to have that and then I think it will also help communicate the pattern because we'll have it in code. Um, so I think that's in terms it's of long term, nice. yeah, vision it, it, and strategy. It doesn't, it doesn't deviate terribly from the radish, yeah, from the radish case either. So just to find, just to find point, it's, you know, it's semi analogous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just to touch, talk about the strategy, it's just, I think, um, from my thoughts on it, just to improve the stability uh, and code quality of the what we've got so that people can download it and use it and experiment. And then from there, build on to these, you know, very quickly, these use, different use cases. And um, it also makes sense, I think, to double down at least a little bit in the near term on the Radish one because that's the most fleshed out, but quickly then follow on with a few other use cases and different different aspects that are, um, you know, I have some overlap with the baseline concept, but pull the concepts out of the protocol, out of the code, out of the, pull the concepts out of the code a little bit, um, such that we can create the abstraction in the best, under the best light, you know, it's like, you. You don't necessarily sit down and build a framework or abstraction. You, you build many different of the same kind of things and then you see the commonalities and you extract that out. So the more we can get people seeing and running the code, uh, the better, the wider net we cast to get companies who are interested in building prototypes and building out those use cases, the quicker we'll get to an established pattern that we can take to uh, other industries and verticals. So. 
Yeah, hundred percent. And and uh, just to to comment on that, uh, in terms of radish, I I just think that there's a lot of potential in it first extending the radish case a little bit towards being closer to the uh, object sizes that are handled and transferred in in real world use cases, so to say, um, because this also gives uh, additional insight on. Um, what to extract to the protocol. So it's exactly what you said. And at the same time, using the already existing example use case and first make it a little bit uh, bigger and more realistic uh, and then have even more learnings on what to extract on protocol level. Yep, yeah, exactly. Uh, very good. So um, and I know that, for example, um, on the use cases, uh, briefly, we should say for the record um, that we got news. We generated news on this, uh, this thing that Balaji has been working on regarding, regarding um, COVID testing. And uh, <clears throat> so you might want to go into the repo and take a look at that. Um, and I, I'd like to make a call to action here. Um, anybody that wants to do a high profile uh, hackathon project over the next 30 days. There's a hackathon about COVID-19 that's being run and Consensus Health is uh, helping run it, but there's also uh, like Brian, I, th I saw that uh, Brian Bellendorf, uh, uh, Vitalik and Joe are gonna be uh, judges and there's other people as well. And I think this is a great opportunity for us to um, explore that use of, of baselining. There were three kind of potential deficiencies in the, or creepy factors maybe as a way to put it, in the way that uh, the Google Apple um, uh, 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 contact tracing scheme is coming up and you know, it's, it's great work. In fact, I have a friend over at Google that uh, I've been talking to about, about uh, how we can get involved. And um, it, you know, th there's, but there's there's some things that maybe baselining can help with, and uh, so it, anybody I think this was a, be a Sorry, great opportunity. I'm not sure how to Whoops, help with that yet, Siri. But I'm always learning. Siri or Google, or, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was that was just like perfect timing, right? Yeah, right. Hey, Google. Um, <clears throat> so <laughs> I think this would be a great opportunity for somebody to get involved. Well, that was good. Um, you know, we're, we're running out of time here. So <clears throat> I will take offline the considering of the day change, but I wanted to have it on the record that it's a, it's a topic. Does everybody, are, everybody understand that potential or idea? Um, so <clears throat> it would be either SSCs on Friday and we're on, on, on and TSCs on Monday or vice versa. Actually, I kind of like the idea of a TSC Friday so that TSC can be about reviewing stuff and SSC about kind of lightly planning stuff or highlighting stuff. Um, does anybody have, a, I'm not gonna actually ask for dissent. I'm just, you know, please ping me. I'll, I'll be the uh, ringleader on that and if you can get, get uh, perspectives to me in the next 24 hours, then we can, uh, we can make a call on that. And with that in mind, I won't call uh, this, the next meeting until I get that in. So watch for uh, an update for the next meeting two weeks from now um, after I get that input. Is that cool for everybody? Sounds good. Um, finally, in, in, in the last two minutes, incentives and sponsorships. So um, <clears throat> there should be no sense of bait and switch here. Um, you know, this is, you know, you, the membership and the activities of the of baseline community is uh, anybody, nobody has to pay any money to be involved in any of this stuff. However, um, we have lots of opportunities to sponsor things that, and, and to generate incentives, do hackathons, sponsor hackathons, do our own hackathons, do bounties, Gitcoin, all of that sort of thing. And um, we also want to support the Oasis. I think Oasis has done, it, it has, has definitely, has, I, I, I don't even need to ask. I know people have been widely praising Oasis's job. Um, so... Um, I won't even ask for a straw poll about it. I know people's feelings about it. Oasis has been doing great. And um, technically the, the, the money runs out uh, for, for, spon for the sponsorship of Oasis runs out at the end of May. So any companies who in this time of crisis 
have the ability to do their membership or their sponsorship that gets you a, a potential uh, position on the PGB. And it gives a, no, a number of other uh, benefits, but um, not sponsoring does not mean that you don't get to do what you've already been doing. Um, so I, you know, uh, I'll leave that with you all. If, you know, for those who can um, and who aren't gonna get in trouble for even bringing it up, uh, this, it would be good to start bringing it up. Um, I think there's some leading companies that will make it, you know, you know get us re-upped to some minimal level by the, by the end of May, I hope. Um, but the more that we can get in by the end of May, the, the more, you know, Jory will have some time for us. And, uh, and, and the more we will have um, kind of a war chest for doing things. That's all I have to say about that right now. Um, and we'll, we'll bring it up again. Um, any any comments on that before we adjourn? John, this is Carol Geyer with Oasis. I just, just wanted to say if anybody has questions and they want to reach out to me, to reach out to me through Jory, whatever, um, I'm happy to talk offline with people about it. Thanks, Carol. We really appreciate all your work, uh, Jory. We, we, we know that, you, that you've been doing for this project more than projects that have 10 times the sponsorship and, uh, and we're grateful. Y'all are fun. This is a fun group. All right, everyone, thanks for the time. Um, and we'll see you in, in under two weeks. This is a, a big couple of two weeks. So uh, um, uh, the, the goal for next time would be that uh, everybody coming back for the TSC and the SSC, that, uh, that, um, that there's been a lot of work done between, you know, that, that they can, that folks can report on. Uh, I'm mindful that I'm taking up a lot of the airtime on these calls and I don't want to, I, I want to, I want to be able to cobble together stuff that people are talking about and then, uh, and then, and then point to them. So with that, uh, thanks a lot. Everyone come to the uh, EY Blockchain Summit this week. Baseline uh, people are going to be there, including me, John, Karthik, a few other people. That starts on t tomorrow, Tuesday. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If anybody ha is ha having a hard time finding it, um, yeah, reach out. We've got, uh, we'll put it on Slack too or Slack, Discourse, and Telegram. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks, bye. Thanks, bye.